We have looked at the mathematical model and the numerical solution strategy. Let's take a look at the hand calculations. And the hand calculations are based on Euler-Bernoulli beam theory. So I'll just write that down. This is classic beam theory that many of you um, might have seen in um, in you know statics course, like a introduction to statics. This is um, this is usually discussed. But and our ANSYS model is based on three D elasticity. Okay, so the hand calculations are using a different mathematical model. And beam theory, the Euler-Bernoulli beam theory has additional assumptions. Um, it assumes that plane sections remain plane and they just rotate. Um, I'll get to that. But the important takeaway is that the hand calculations are based on a different mathematical model than the, the ANSYS results. Um, but in this case, the assumptions built into the Euler-Bernoulli beam theory are, are valid because you know if you look at the ANSYS results, you see that, oh, the cross sections do plane cross sections do remain plane so you can use um, use the hand calcs and you get a pretty good comparison we also have experimental data which we will look at in the validation section so euler bernoulli beam theory you know quickly what um, the idea is that you look at the midline which is also called the neutral axis and you say once i figure out how the uh, what the deformed state of the midline is, I can calculate everything else from that. So you reduce it to finding the deformed state of the midline. And if I have a two-dimensional view of the beam, and let's say that's the midline, and you'll have to pardon my chicken scratch, and I pick a point like that, um, and you know the, the neutral axis, I'll exaggerate the deformation. Let's say once I put the load on, I'll get something like that. And the um, the assumption, you know, in, in the most basic form of euler bernoulli beam theory is that a point on the neutral axis can move up or down. Here it's moved down. Let's say the load is like that. So on applying the load, this point moves here, and a cross section like that, and I'll only draw the upper part of the cross section, is going to rotate as a cross section which means that once I know that distance, okay, um, that, that deformation, how much the, um, the point on the neutral axis is moving, and I know this rotation, I can find you know, displacement at any other point like that on the cross section. And you find this displacement and this rotation by minimizing the potential energy. I don't want to go into details um, in the interest of time, but if you're not familiar with Euler-Bernoulli beam theory, you might want to look it up. And um, so we can use that theory and come up with some, you know, estimates of what the stress is at A and B at you know location like that. And we are looking at the stress in the x direction, which is called the bending stress. That's going to be the the biggest component. So the normal stress in the x direction. And we say, you know what? The loading condition looks like a beam in bending. And if I had uniform cross-section, the bending stress is given, or sigma x is given by my by i. Um, m is the moment over there. It's going to be force times this uh, distance uh, along here. y is going to be the distance uh, from the neutral axis. So. Let's say if that's the point on the neutral axis, y is going to be the distance from that to b or to a. And i is going to be the moment of inertia. So if I draw a cross section like that, it's going to be the moment of inertia of that cross section. This really, you know, the classic form is derived for a beam of cross constant cross section. And we can extend it to varying cross-section if you don't have abrupt variations in the 
uh, in the cross section. And you know, here we have a pretty gradual variation on the cross section. So we just use local values. For instance, for moment of inertia, I just use the moment of inertia at that location, wherever I'm looking, you know, where I'm trying to estimate the bending stress. And if you do that at A, you'll get uh, sigma x is equal to 14,300 PSI. And that's tensile because the beam is, you know, being bent this way. Um, that makes sense. And at B, um, it's going to be the same value, but it's going to be compressive. So at A and B, y, the magnitude of Y is the same. The sign is opposite. That's something we can check, uh, um, you know, our answers results with. One can also make estimates of what the range of the maximum displacement should be that is you know we can bracket like uh, we can say okay the maximum displacement has to be in this range i won't get into that in the interest of time